So yeah, I've been to a couple of these events before. Uh, I come from a bit of a different space, I guess. Oh, it's gone. Um, then a lot of people here. I'm an artist who works with computational media and interactivity. Uh, I know Alex and Miles from Hack Lab TO, which I'm a member of. I think I've met a bunch of you there as well. Um, Alex came to a recent show I was doing uh, in Hamilton, where basically um, I extracted lots of data from the sun and made a 25-minute film that composes audio and visuals of the sun over, like, it's generative, so it kind of takes takes you this journey. But basically, um, after that, Alex asked me to come and give a little talk about some of the stuff I use. Um, I use a variety of open source kind of software, um, as well as some programming myself. Um, I started out with a, a music technology background, um, so I kind of come from this place where I'd be using um, software like Maximus P and Pure Data, which is graphical stuff coded in C, and you create modules in C and then you can connect them together and basically create music. Um, but my earlier background to that, which is why I became interested in data, was building these, oh, you can't see anything on the screen. So I started out with recording electromagnetic spectrum um, sounds from space. So these are, I built very basic radio uh, telescopes called VLF antennas. Um, so I built these radio very simple radio telescopes, and I record the sound and then process this. Um, and this is kind of what got me later interested in, obviously, space, um, which is basically I work a lot with data from NASA and other space organizations in my work, but also um, in the kind of the process of, of data sonification, which is turning information into sound. Um, and so this is some more recent work where I was working with code from, well, data from Voyager, and basically incorporating that into audio and visual works, like very, very simple graphs. Um, and then just some basic of my interests are, are very simple algorithms, so sorting pixels, and just sorting algorithms in general, um, and kind of concrete poetry, and working with basic tech stuff. So. Um, I also do a bunch of stuff more recently. I've been working with pen plotters and building bespoke kind of dither algorithms to convert images into dithered vector files, which I can then plot with um, self-built pen, pen plotters, so X, Y um, things similar to 3D printers. Uh, this is a, actually a broken plot. It's a DNA molecule, or a piece of DNA, and it took about 12 hours. It's um, plotted as individual points. Uh, and you can see in sections like here, the, the paper's slightly higher, so I find that I came back to find that there were kind of glitches in the, in the plot, but actually, aesthetically, it was quite interesting to me. And then pieces like this, where I'm taking RGB values and just mapping the highest RGB value of each row of a picture and then plotting that, and also things like this, which is a more concrete image that is dithered without any well, without too much error in the, in the plot. Well, this one took about 11 hours. Um, also recently, I've been working a lot with, um, been working a lot with audio, so just taking images and incorporating images and text into audio spectra. So this is another piece of open source software I used a fair amount just to, to view spectrum, is Audacity, which has a very simple, um, normally obviously it's a waveform, but spectrogram view. So this was some of the data the sun that I was working with, so like accumulating the number of sunspots uh, over a 12-month period, and then mapping that to sound that is then obviously playable, but also looks like an image. So this is, um, I think I was mentioning earlier, this is pure data. So basically, I built a bunch of modules within pure data. Some of them I, I had to code in C, and some of them I just built. It's a, it's a graphical program interface, so it's kind of a boilerplate at the front. But basically, this allows me to load in CSV and data files. And then, so for example, here I have the highest, this is an image file where I've just taken the, the highest RGB points, and it maps those into a scale of MIDI. And then I can basically use multiple modules I made, like a modular synthesizer, so I can then perform live with, um, with data and stuff like that that I've, that I've created. And that basically informed a lot of the score of this film, which was the film that was at the exhibition that Alex and Miles came to see in Hamilton, uh, basically mapping lots and lots of ways of imaging the sun 
and mapping the sunspots and using that artistically. This here is a piece of software called SAO Image, which is um, a piece of basically astronomical data to view FITS files, um, which I was working with to get some of that data and then mapping that into more generative art that was exporting the sun in various ways. Uh, and then finally, I'll just play the same sound that was, or well, the same data that is in this file here without really doing anything to it. A lot of the time I play around with, with kind of the modules and things to get sound. It's just loading the, the information in. Um, I think it would just come out from my speakers unless I can hook up to that TV. And I have obviously like controls of how fast I cycle through the um, the data files. <laughs> and that is basically it. Final thing I was going to do is show you a. Um, I've been building a lot of physical things, so part of the exhibition was I was cutting this information from sunspots into playable vinyl discs. So basically, I created a way of using laser cutters to cut very low quality sound, so about five to eight bit quality sound, just because you don't have a depth access on a laser cutter. Um, so cutting audio into acrylic. Uh, so this will play back on a, on a vinyl player. Yeah. And so this was, this was part of the kind of the exhibition and some of the, the sounds that I was recording and kind of generating formed these discs. And that is it.